Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady and Principal Owner of Everett Tax Solutions, where we help you win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday. And when you tune in my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the home business community. All right. On May 7th, the uh, TIGDA, the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration, released its interim uh, filing season report. And I wanted to share that with you to help give you some insight as what's going on at the IRS. Um, we see in the news about how all of these tax changes and things have an impact on the tax payer, uh, on us as taxpayers, but they're really not talking about what's happening at the IRS and the impact it has on tax professionals. So I really want to um, to just spend a minute to give you an idea of what's going on. So the first thing that stuck out to me was the amount of work that the IRS still has to do. The IRS was shut down for COVID as well. They had to shut down operations last year and you all remember that whole debacle, right? <laughs> and if you don't, I don't know where you were. But, um, you know, they had to shift their operations to where they have people, you know, to be able to work from home, just like the rest of us, right? The IRS was not set up to do that because it's not like these, um, these agents can just take your stuff home and work on your tax stuff at home. That's not how this works. So um, it really caused a huge, huge backlog. There are still people who are complaining that they have not received their 2019 refunds. Totally get that. Uh, there are still people who haven't, you know, have filed 2020 and haven't gotten those refunds. Yes, we totally know that too. But as tax professionals, there's nothing that we can do about that. Once the IRS gets it, it's above us now, right? Um, so let's talk about it in, so this, uh, this report is up through, uh, December 25th of 2020. And there is some, uh, 2021 data as well. So at the end of 2020, well, let me go, let me share this. So December 28th, 2019, there were 183,000 paper returns waiting to be processed. December 25th, 2020, there were 3.5 million paper returns waiting to be processed. Paper returns have to deal with human hands, okay? 3.5 million. Um, error resolution, at the end of 2019, there were 24,000 returns. At the end of 2020, there were 162,000 returns. Now, a, an, an error return is a, a return that they receive that can't be processed because of incomplete data or so there's something missing in the return, okay? Rejects, at the end of 2019, there were 121,000 uh, rejected returns. The end of December 2020, there was basically 1.7 million returns that were rejected. Unpostables. Unpostable returns are returns that uh, will not post to the taxpayer's account because of validity checks. Okay. So, you know, all those ID checks that, you know, y'all get mad about and think it's our fault, it's not our fault. All right. So at the end of 2019, there were 193,000 unpostables. At the end of 2020, there were 1.463 million unpostable returns. Amended returns. At the end of 2019, there were 110,000 amended returns. At the end of 2020, there were 1.4 million amended returns that needed to be filed. So out of all of that, that's 5.1 million returns just at the end of 2020 that still needed to be processed and that require human intervention. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't get better. <laughs> the news does not get better. Um, so, you know, then we had, um, you know, we, ex they extended the filing date, even though it was painful, um, painful, meaning that, um, you know, 
by extending the date that also extended people's attention, meaning like whenever the, when the IRS extended the filing deadline last year to July, people just said, huh, okay, well now I have until July when, if you still should have just went ahead and filed, but that's, that's, that's just human nature. Um, and so, you know, with those filing delays, it's, it's still, it didn't help the backlog any at all. And also stopping to issue the stimulus payments that also caused additional delays. So, um, they showed the number of refunds that have been issued, uh, in 2020 and, you know, versus, you know, 2021. So 2020 would have been the 2019 and 2021 is a 2020 filing tax year. So um, they had re they had released 52 billion refunds in uh, at the end of 2020 and 2021. So far, we're at like 36, um, 36 billion, like a 32 percent drop. Right. Um and even, you know, going direct deposit, it was still down almost 30% from year to year. So the, um, now the percentage of returns that were e-filed, that went up. So there's some good news there. People are starting to use e-file, but there are people that still mail returns as their primary way of filing. That is such a bad idea. You should not file your return by paper unless you absolutely have to. Now let's talk about the work that's still remaining to be done. This right here. All right. So at the end of December, um, of at the at December fifth, I'm sorry, December twenty fifth, twenty twenty, there were seventeen thousand five hundred um, unopened mail uh, mail receipts. Right at the end of at March twenty uh, twenty twenty one, March twentieth. There was 1.1 million envelopes that have yet to be opened. Paper returns waiting to be processed. Received in calendar year 2020, 3.5 million. Uh, at the week ending March 20th, 2021, 2.4 million. Received in calendar year 2021, there's still 2.5 million. Error resolution, 7.5 million at the end of uh, March, 2021. Rejections, 1.3 million. Unpostables, the things that can't go get posted to your account because the information did not pass the validity check, 1.8 million. And there are also 1.8 million returns that still need to be amended as of March 20th, 2021. Now, keep in mind that the IRS had a reduced staff, right? One of the big... Um, things that hit the news was during the Trump administration, funding to the IRS was cut. So funding gets cut, people get cut, right? Um, and that, uh, you know, and although they did increase some automation, you know, again, who could predict COVID, right? And so now there is a shortage of staff, a uh, shortage of staff to the point where um, I forgot who it was from the IRS that said, that they're only able to answer about 10% of the calls that they receive. So when you're sitting there like, I can't get anybody on the phone, well, that's why, because they don't have the staff. Now they are working to improve the um, the staffing. They've noted that um, the IRS needs 5,000 um, new hires in order to deal with the current volume. But now also understand that they are also increasing enforcement. So in those new hires, it's not just processing people, it's also gonna be um, effective tax administration, like really enforcing the law to make sure that you know folks are paying what they're supposed to pay. So, um, the, and, and you know, there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be done. We're still filing for, um, you know, for the year. There are still people who, you know, have, returns that have to be filed. I can tell you now I have more extensions filed this year than I have in, you know, my little four and a half year history. Right. Um, but just across the board, it, you know, with, um, with the tax industry, 
people are noting that they have way more extensions filed than they normally would because there's so much. There was you know, the, the change of the tax code mid-season really brought everything to a grinding halt for us because we had to wait for guidance and also had to wait for our software developers to be able to program the software in order for it to do the right thing. And we also had to stop and learn what the new laws were. So if the software was wrong, then we knew the software was wrong and we could go and, you know, throw up the red flag and say, hey, y'all need to fix this kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I wanted to really, you know, come out and share with you, like what's really going on industry wide and why these things are happening. Um, there are, I have seen the, you know, clients getting impatient, getting upset with their tax preparers. And like I've told you before, your tax preparers are working really, really hard because there is so much stuff out there and you want to make sure you get it right the first time. Because if you have to amend, even though you can e-file an amendment now, that doesn't mean it gets processed faster. It just gets added to the, um, it just gets added to the pile. Right. So you want to make sure that you get it right the first time, because if you have to go back and amend, if you have to go back and then send the additional information, then that is going to cause a delay. And on a normal day, when you amend a return or you have to send additional information or something like that, on a normal day, it takes 12 weeks to process. Now you're looking at six to nine months and possibly a year just because of the volume. So you wanna make sure that you take the time to get it right, to get all of this documentation in because otherwise you're gonna be sitting around uh, behind all of this unopened mail and that's gonna take a long time. Um, tax returns are not posting to accounts do as quickly as they normally would. I, um, I actually had to call the IRS for a client you know, and he was like, hey, you know, yeah, you filed a month ago, but this still hasn't been posted yet. And I was like, okay, do you have an idea of when it like could possibly like ballpark shake your magic eight ball? And he said, yeah, try back in June. And this was a call I made in April. Okay. So, um, yeah, so things are not being posted as quickly as they normally would. So when you're looking for your transcripts to be posted for whatever reason, whether it's for your mortgage or loans or anything like that, that's why. All right. So I hope that gives you some insight into what is happening in these tax streets and just know that, yeah, it's all taking longer. And, um, also there was a lot, there were a lot of, um, there were, were a lot of forms that were late coming out. Like normally you have until January 31st to get your 1099 NECs out, um, formerly the 1099 miscellaneous. We still have the 1099 miscellaneous, but it's for other stuff, not for non-employee in compensation. Um, but those forms were late coming out and, you know, it people had to pump the brakes on their taxes. There were some people that filed their taxes before they got all of their documents. And it's because those documents were late. And this is why it's important for you to know as a consumer what goes in your tax return so you know, hey, I should have had another W-2 or I should have had a 1099 because that keeps you from filing a return before it's ready. But now there are a lot of people that have to go back and amend because they got these tax forms late, okay? So yeah, definitely got to know uh, what's in your return. Okay. So I think that's it, you know, to give you the update of, you know, what's going on in the tax streets, also what's going on on the administrative end for the IRS side. Okay. So hope that helps you out. You guys have a fantastic day. We got to get back to work. All right. Have a great day. You guys we will see you next time. Bye.